Hey, what's going on guys? This is Bio here, and I've been looking around the internet. I haven't seen too many videos like this, so I figured I'd go ahead and do this. And what I wanted to do today is to show you guys how to fix or replace an Ethernet cable or a Cat5, Cat6, which uh, they're pretty standard parts-wise, uh, head-wise, plugs-wise, so on and so forth. But anyways, uh, you know, I go to I go to LAN parties all the time. I have a lot of cable that I use. And you know, every now and then tabs get broken, cables get cut, they just stop working. And instead of you know buying Ethernet cables every time this happens, you know, however long they may be, 10, 15, 20, 50 feet, uh, in the long run, it'll save me a lot of money if I just know how to fix them, so I can just replace the heads. So that is what I want to do here. And as you can see, I got three different things going on here. One is the cable itself. Uh, one end has just the wires exposed, and then the other end already has a uh, head on it. The other thing I got is the tool called a crimper. Uh, this thing is pretty cheap. I got it off of Amazon for about 13 bucks. You might be able to find it cheaper at a local hardware store like Home Depot or Menards or something like that. Uh, and then the last thing I got here is the heads themselves. I have a bag of 10 and then two cent not ready to go. I think I got them for like 30 cents a piece, so they're pretty cheap. Uh, like I said, in the short run, you won't save too much money. I mean, if you're only one cable you're worrying about, then obviously you're going to, you know, not save really that much money. But if you plan on gaming for a long time or if you go to parties, you know, like I said, things happen. Tabs get broken, cables get cut, wires get screwed up, cables stop working, so on and so forth. And so, you know, it might be a good idea to invest in a little bit of the uh, tools here and uh, on the know-how side to uh, learn how to fix things and, you know, save you a little money in the long run. And plus, it's just, uh, it's nice to be able to quickly fix cables and not have to go out and buy a new one. So I'm going to change camera angles here, and we will get right into it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to strip the cable of its coating so we can get at the wires and untwist them. Now, so you've got the cable here, and you got that blue coating you can see, and on the inside, if you look inside, you can see the eight individual copper wires. What we want to do is we want to take a little bit of this blue shielding off. You want to take about an inch or so off, and so what you want to do is you want to take your crimper, and for me, I want to use the side that has two blades. So you got two blades here, the bigger one on top and the smaller one on bottom. On the other side, there's only one blade that you can see. Your tool may be different, so pay attention. But uh, most of the ones, or all of the ones I've worked with so far, have, have this kind of standard. But you're going to take your crimper, and there's a perfect little slot, if you can see, right, right at the edge of, on the right side of the big blade, there's like a semicircle, and you're going to put the cable inside of that. Like I said, you want to use about an inch or so of cable in there to give yourself some slack to work with later. And then press down. Um, for me, for this tool, I can press down as hard as I want, and it's not going to bite into the cable. And it's you know, not going to take out any copper wire or anything like that. I can press down as hard as I want. Your tool may be different. It might bite into it, so you know, adjust accordingly. Pay attention to that. But once you have it in there, twist about left and right, you know, just back and forth, maybe all the way around just to make sure you're cutting every bit of the cable. And then once you, uh, you know, got a pretty good bite into it, uh, go ahead and take away the crimper and put both hands on both sides and pull apart. You might have to do a little twist. That came about pretty easily. And there you go. We have the eight copper wires, and they are twisted pair, meaning that there's going to be four pairs, and each of these pairs, they have their partners. So you're going to have, you see here, you can see orange, green, blue, and brown. And so orange's partner is going to be orange-white. Green's partner is going to be green-white. Uh, it's important to know that because when you put the cable back into the plug head, this uh, this little thing here, you're gonna want to make sure the couples, <laughs> the couples, <laughs> the couples on no, you're gonna want to make sure that the cables are the same on both sides. So on the other side of this cable here, you can see that we have orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, green, uh, excuse me, white, brown, brown. And that's actually an industry standard, but that's not important. You don't have to memorize it. Just look at uh, your cable and see how it lines up. Uh, bottom is considered tab side down, so look at it from this way uh, with the tab on the other side. This is the top side. And like I said, there's industry standards. It's not important to know. Um, two of them are widely used, so you're really going to have to look at your cable. It might not be the same as mine. But anyways, uh, first things first here, you can take apart... Uh, this insulation you can see is a little bit of this like fine hair-like substance. You can take that out. That's not important. Um, mainly it's to be used for pulling some more cable through if you need to use it later, if you screw up and you don't want to cut again. So, uh, but anyways, we don't need that. Not too important. I've never used it at this point, so I just kind of cut it to get out of the way. Use the side of the crimper with the small blade. Go ahead and just take that out. Make sure to not cut any cable. 
And at any point, if you look at your wiring and you see kind of that uh, bronze, coppery, metallic, that means you cut into the cable, and so you're probably going to have to start over again because you're going to lose signal if that's the case. But uh, I don't see any here, so we're looking, looking pretty good. So we'll start with orange. And go ahead, you can see that they're kind of twisted up. You're going to have to unravel them. Uh, I tend to just sometimes, depending on how long of a cable I cut, I just start from the bottom and pull them apart. But, you know, you can unravel them your own way, whatever. And so you unravel them. And then once you unravel them, you kind of straighten them out if you can. You know, just pull hard on them and pull apart. Or pull out, excuse me, not pull apart. And you want to do this because then it's easier to put them into the head later. And uh, for time's sake, I'll probably just go ahead and cut ahead to after I've unraveled all these. So uh, I'll catch you then. All right, so now we got all the uh, cables untwisted, or all the uh, four pairs there untwisted. The next thing we're going to want to do is to put them in order. I believe I may have mentioned before, but there's kind of uh, there's a couple different industry standards. But like I said, it really doesn't matter. Just look at what the other cable is to line them up. So on this other cable here, we have uh, white, orange, orange. You probably you guys probably can't see it too well, so just have to you just have to take my word for it. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. That may or may not be the order that you have, so check your cable and see tab side down, always to uh, help you orient yourself. But so we got uh, white, orange here, orange. Try and make that good. So it's already pretty lined up pretty nicely. Um, white, green, and blue. And you're gonna have to finagle with this. This part gets pretty tedious because these cords don't want to stay where you put them. But it doesn't have to be perfect yet anyways to try and get them close to the right spot. So we got white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. See, it's already pretty much in order. And then once you have them kind of close to that order that you want, go ahead and uh, smooth them out, bring them together a little bit because you're going to cut them. And you're going to cut them because this is way too much wiring to shove into a cable head here. <laughs> So here's the, here's the cable head, and as you can see, that's not going to work. You're going to have a lot of wiring exposed, and that's not good. You want to try to have a little bit of this blue inside of the head, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. But anyways, we're going to put these together a little bit more. Take the crimper tool and use the side with the small blade, small blade on bottom. Go ahead and take off probably, probably a little bit more than half of what I got here. This is way too much. And you're going to want to have about a quarter inch maybe yeah, about a quarter inch or so left so a little bit less than a centimeter or so a little bit. go ahead and just take that off shouldn't have to press down too hard to get the cables to cut if you are then you're probably using the wrong side of the crimper but oh and I have my dog in my lap right now and he's moving around stop it anyways here we go so you got it cut that looks about a pretty good length compared to the cable head maybe want to cut off a bit more later let's see here that's looking just about right actually so with the tab side down, once again, go ahead and try to put the cable in. And when you do this, you're going to want to have the cable stay down low because that's where it fits into. If you try to go up high, it's going to make it more difficult to put it in. So, oh, many. I just did a lot of sexual innuendos there, didn't I? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Anyways, go ahead and try to thread the needle, if you will. Put them all in there. And they should fit in pretty easily. Um, don't be afraid to put a little force into it. It's totally fine. Uh, this one's actually taking a little bit of effort. There we go. And then once you have them in there, visually confirm that they are right or wrong. So for me, I'm probably wrong, but uh, you know, I'll have to see. Yep, I got my uh, white, orange, and orange mixed up. Uh, I got my white, blue, and green mixed up. I got a lot of things mixed up here. So this definitely wanted to move around. So here, you know, this is the tedious part. You just got to move these cables around until they uh, fit in there snugly in the correct order. It's white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue. It's getting mixed up with that green there. Green, white, brown, brown. Let's try this again here. Try and grab right at the end here to try and keep, keep these cables from shifting positions. Uh, once, once they're inside the head, they usually don't shift too much. But like I said, always visually confirm that it's right. Otherwise, you can end up with a bad cable, and you're going to have to start all over again, which is none too fun. Visually inspect the cable here once again. Looks like we got white, orange, orange. White, green is twisted with blue. Bummer. Bummer, bummer. Well, I'm just going to, this is taking a little bit too long here, so I'm just going to skip ahead to when it is in the correct order. So I'll see you then. All right, so I got my cable. got the uh, all the needles threaded, if you will, in the correct order. 
and got a tiny bit of blue in there. Looks just about right. Looks just about the perfect amount of blue you want in there. A little bit more, a little bit less. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And so the final step in this process is where this uh, crimper comes in most used out of any step. You're going to want to see, if you see here, there's two different slots. Try and give you more light in there. There's 8P and 6P. And you're going to be wanting to use the 8P for this. Because the 6P is meant for RJ11 heads, which is, you know, phone jacks and modems and things like that. The 8P is meant for Cat5 and Cat6 Ethernet cables. Now, as you can see, I can put it in on this side, or I can also flip the tool over and put it in on the other side as well. You're going to want to make sure you do not put it on this side that I'm showing you right now. You can actually fit it in there. It takes a little bit more effort. Uh, I made that mistake the first few times. You want to make sure you do it on the side with the labels. It should be very easy to you know, fit it in there, very snug, very secure. If you put it on the other side, like I said, you can do it, but it takes a lot more effort. And if you do it that way, you will end up um, wrecking the head. It won't work. So make sure you put it on the side that's pretty easy to get the cable in there. Once you have it in there, you're going to go ahead and put a little force into this cable. You're going to want to push it forward into the tool and make sure you're doing that the whole time. You don't need to put a ton of force, but then go ahead and one, while you're pushing with that force, go ahead and press down on the cable. And you'll hear, you'll hear a bunch of noises, that's fine. <laughs> Sometimes when I do this, I don't hear any noise. Sometimes I hear uh, a lot of noise, so that's no big deal regardless of what happens. Go ahead and put a ton of force into it, let go, and you should be all good to go. Sorry, my camera just kind of swiveled there a little bit. Just do a double check, go ahead and pull on the cord and make sure it doesn't come apart. If, uh, if you did this Incorrectly, that thing will pop off really easily. You don't need to put a ton of force. If you did it correctly, it should be pretty snug and good to go. And that is it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you later.